Xbox are very generous. When there's bad news, it seems to just keep flowing. The train does not stop. More and more terrible things come out about them. Their executives, their plans, clearly they've got no idea what they're doing. And we're hearing about more of that today. This comes off the back of them closing four studios yesterday. And I really think the critical part of yesterday's news was that Tango Gameworks were shut down. They were really the only studio out of the four that I felt were producing great games right now, and they had genuine potential. If they just closed the Redfall studio, I mean, did they deserve it? Probably, even though I've liked some of their games in the past. But Tango, they, they didn't really put a foot wrong. You had Hi-Fi Rush, critically acclaimed, very recent, came out a year ago, and the Evil Within titles. Maybe not everyone's absolute favourites, but I thought they did a good job. I actually liked the second one more than the first, so I thought that they were improving things. But now they're totally gone, despite Phil Spencer, Xbox, talking about wanting more Japanese studios. They were a Japanese team, they've been gutted, they are gone. And the reasoning given, it all seemed a little bit strange. They said yesterday that it was all about, oh, we want to focus on big name IPs. But since then, Mr. Matt Booty, head of Xbox Game Studios, he has come out and said in a Microsoft town hall, so I assume this was internal, it wasn't meant to leak, but these things get out. He said, we need smaller games that give us prestige and awards. And if you don't see the irony, that was exactly what Hi-Fi Rush was. It was a mid-budget game, but it had that prestige as well. It was considered easily the best Xbox game of last year. It was getting eights, nines, and tens. And even with how middling Xbox have been, if Hi-Fi Rush had released on literally any other system, if it was a Nintendo Switch game, an exclusive for instance, people still would have loved it. It wasn't just that it was the best of a bad lot from Xbox. It was a genuinely good game that people liked and people had some hope for Xbox. Now that's gone. You shut literally the only team that seemed to be producing something of competence. How are they gone, but the Halo Infinite team survives? They've made like three games in a row, they've ruined Halo, they're fine, but you shut down a studio that's been doing genuinely good things. You, you claim that you wanted more Japanese teams, you clearly don't care, it was your only Japanese team, you've shuttered them, that's the end of it. Now there are more updates on this as well, so there's a Bloomberg article, I think it's behind a paywall, so we'll cover the important points, but apparently things genuinely are getting worse, Microsoft's Xbox, they're planning more cuts after studios closing yesterday. So this was only the start. There are probably going to be more teams that are going to get gutted, whether they're studio shutdowns or just layoffs. We'll have to see, but someone's compiled the key points from this article. Tango was in the process of pitching a sequel to Hi-Fi Rush, said the people who asked not to be named. So this wasn't meant to be public information, but we're finding out about it, and this is probably the saddest part. It's not like with Tango, we're just losing like the Redfall studio, where at best we were going to get more and more updates to a turd of a game. I think they were working on like a single player update to Redfall. Who cares? We lose that. I'm sure we can live. But to hear we're losing a Hi-Fi Rush 2, a sequel to a beloved game, or maybe even more Evil Within, or, or perhaps other horror games. I know there were some leaks suggesting that Evil Within 3 was in the pipeline at some point. Some pretty credible leaks. To hear we're losing that, it's just genuinely sad. And it shows what we lose when these executives, these Phil Spencers, these Matt Booties, they make short-sighted decisions purely to please shareholders and make up for your own shit decisions, such as... Game Pass. We hear about how Hi-Fi Rush wasn't a commercial success. Why was that? Because it was on Game Pass. On PC, you could get like a $1 a month deal. People on Xbox, if they've already got a subscription, great, they can play Hi-Fi Rush. And then the team, Tango, they look bad because the game's not selling, but it's really because of Microsoft and their monetization model. You've taught people not to buy games, and then you punish your own competent teams that are doing a great job when copies aren't selling. You blame them. Look inward. You are stupid. The Phil Spencers, the Matts, you are the failures here. Xbox president Matt Booty praised Hi-Fi Rush, but did not specify why the company had shut down the team behind it. Just more corporate speak, just avoiding answers. If you're actually honest and you said, hey, we understand it was well-received, 
but it doesn't line up with what we want to do going forward, which is to have more of those bigger games like Fallout 5, maybe more Elder Scrolls from teams outside of Todd Howard's. If you at least say that, I might disagree with it, but at least we see where you're coming from. When you don't give an answer, it just sounds weird. And I don't understand how other teams wouldn't be feeling kind of anxious. For instance, you have, of course, Avowed coming out from Obsidian. Will they be nervous if Avowed doesn't move copies, if it doesn't go really well? Are they next? Are they going to get shut down? In Exile, they're working on an RPG, Clockwork Revolution. It's probably not going to be a juggernaut seller. Will they be gone? When you're not really giving your philosophy around why you're doing this, then people are not going to know, and they'll just assume they're going to be next on the chopping block. Speaking about the closures more broadly, Booty said the company studios had been spread too thin, like peanut butter on bread, and that leaders across the division had felt understaffed. They decided to close these studios to free up resources elsewhere. Again, it doesn't make sense because we heard all about how Starfield, for instance, Xbox was supporting it, there were all these great benefits from having Microsoft involved, I didn't see any of those benefits. It was a dog shit game, and no one could apparently see that. You had the internal Bethesda team. Maybe they had tunnel vision. They'd worked on it for so long, they were passionate about making something. They couldn't see that they had a pile of crap on your hands. But when Microsoft's team members, when they went in there and, and apparently helped, surely at some point, someone senior went... This isn't fun. What are you doing? But you obviously continued to invest in that. You spent years on it. Apparently it had more QA than any other Bethesda game. That's why it was maybe less glitchy. That's why you claim. So you can invest there in something awful. But when it comes to Tango, who have actually produced games people liked, these are games with positive word of mouth, where people are just organically talking about how good they are. Hi-Fi Rush, Evil Within 2, and so on. Just genuinely fun games. But when it comes to Starfield, you have to literally try and manipulate people into buying it, pretending it's good, like with the Steam reviews, where they were replying to people, arguing with people's negative reviews, making up crap. Oh, no, there's a, there's a reason that planets are boring. It's how space would really be. What are you talking about? That's fun, because it's realistic. Just... All this crap that no one was buying, but now that all is said and done, the Starfield team is safe. They can keep working on the Elder Scrolls. A beloved IP, you have to get that right, or you'll drive the Elder Scrolls into the toilet like you've done with Halo. Everything Xbox touches turns to crap, seemingly. So they're safe with Elder Scrolls. You're not doing anything there, but you close a team in Tango that were doing a great job. It seems like internal politics or something. There's no logic behind your decisions. It makes no sense to me because even if Tango weren't profitable with Hi-Fi Rush, if the financials were a concern, surely you could have suggested that they work on a beloved IP. They're capable of making great games. I'm sure they could have done that with an already successful IP that might have sold really, really well. Did you give them that option? I highly doubt it. It's just all a little bit strange. I don't understand what management are you doing. You've got all these IPs underutilized, and yet you're shutting great teams down. Booty added that the shutdown of Arcane Austin was not connected to the performance of its new multiplayer game, Redfall, a critical and commercial flop. This actually makes the least sense to me. Because if they had to come out and said, we are shutting down Arcane Austin because Redfall was a flop, we just can't support this studio anymore, this is the end, it would have made sense. A handful of people maybe get upset, but the majority go, yep, we understand, it all sucks. Austin made good games previously like Prey, but clearly things have gone wrong and there's no point you flushing cash down the toilet by trying to salvage this game. Redfall was unsalvageable. But rather than say that, or do this 12 months ago when it should have happened, straight after the Redfall launch, when it was clearly awful, they let that team keep working on an update, and then they canned them at the finish line. Apparently a huge update was going to come out in like October, that would have turned it into a single player game, or given you that option, but that's not happening now. So you kept them open, poured money in, wasted it all because they're gone now. It's just weird. And the fact that you're saying it's not connected, the shutdown is not connected to the fact that this game was a flop, that's even more confusing because now other teams might be thinking, hang on, if Austin had have produced a great game, if Redfall had have been good, are you saying that you would have shut them down anyway because this has nothing to do with their previous game? Obviously he's lying. He's either lying 
or they're even more stupid than we thought. They're just shutting teams down at random. There's no real rhyme or reason. It depends what the spreadsheet says today. The bean counters, all a bit weird. Before its closure, Arcane Austin had been looking to return to its roots by pitching a new single-player immersive sim game, such as a new entry in the Dishonored series. Note, the last two Dishonored games were actually made by Arcane Lions, so the other Arcane team that is still working on games. They're making Blade, I believe, but the Dishonored series is basically on ice. I mean, this could have been a positive. They could have kept Dishonored going while the other team was working on Blade, so at least we don't end up going like 15 years between Dishonored entries like has been happening with Fallout. Now that's not going to happen. The Dishonored series seems basically dead because Blade is pretty early in dev. We probably won't even see that for three or four years. Now, some will say, hey, the Austin team, they never even worked on a Dishonored game. Would it have been good? Well, they did work on Prey. I understand that most of the staff who worked on Prey are no longer there, but they still had some good leaders. Harvey Smith, I believe, he's worked on some great immersive sims years ago. I'm sure if he was out there recruiting, saying, Arcane Austin, they're making a single-player immersive sim, there's no more Redfall garbage, he could have rebuilt that team with great people. Even if you rebranded the whole thing, you essentially shut down Arcane Austin to start fresh. You let Harvey Smith, the people who are still there, at Arcane, who worked on Prey, you let them make a brand new studio for immersive sims. This could have been a real positive, but the fact that you're just shutting them, you're not really replacing those studios with something else, maybe something better. They're just gone. It means less games. You're putting all of these resources back into the big AAA or quad AAA, whatever they call it now. The Call of Duty's Elder Scrolls 6, which who knows if that's going to be good. We're certainly not getting more games out of this. You're just investing everything. You're putting all your eggs in a couple of baskets, the huge IPs. Nothing here suggests that gamers are going to get the better deal out of this. It's not good for us because the people at Xbox, they just continually make bad decisions. So we've got no confidence. And that continues here with Jill Braff, head of Zenimax Studios. She said in a town hall that she hopes the reorganization would allow the division to put more focus on fewer projects, which is exactly what I'm saying. They're going all in on a handful of games instead of diversifying. It's hard to support nine studios across the world. I think we're about to topple over, she added. Now, this is ridiculous because I looked at this person's LinkedIn profile, Jill Braff. She was brought in specifically to integrate ZeniMax with Bethesda. She didn't even work at Microsoft or Bethesda before this. She was brought in specifically to ensure that all these Bethesda ZeniMax teams would run smoothly and integrate well with Microsoft. She essentially says here that she failed. It's too hard to support all these teams where it's all going to fall over. Well, how is it that Nintendo has done it for all these years? Even Sony has done it for all these years, and they've done a much better job than Microsoft. So to say it can't be done, essentially, you're just showing how incompetent you are, as well as everyone in senior management. It's not it can't be done, it's all going to topple over, fall over. It's that you failed to make it work. And your response is to shut competent teams and just go all in like the EAs and the Ubisofts do now, where they work on like three IPs, whether it's Battlefield, Assassin's Creed. It's not going to work. The industry is going to get to an extremely bad place, and that's where it's going to topple over. Not because you have a team working on Hi-Fi Rush 2. It's because you go, Elder Scrolls 6 needs to sell 40 million copies, and if that fails, gaming is basically dead. That's the mindset that you're going in with ludicrous and maybe they push for this crap because they know a game that big is going to take like six seven years so they can collect their executive salaries for almost a decade and then when it all falls over they can just jump out with a golden parachute get another job somewhere else keep failing upwards that is the only explanation because this makes no sense and i'll just say lastly even with this news that is just consistently negative for xbox barely any good news comes out about them the fanboys still keep pushing this while they'll say, yes, everything's burning down around me, but we've still got Game Pass. As long as Game Pass is a thing, I'm going to keep gaming on Xbox. It's such a great deal. Well, you've got to really think about that. 
because ever since Microsoft bought Activision, they've been a little bit half-hearted about what's getting added and what's not. So Call of Duty, for instance. I know there were people, myself included, who were like, wouldn't it be nice if all the Call of Duty campaigns from all the old games went to Game Pass? Because some of them I'd be semi-interested in, like Modern Warfare 2, that far back, I haven't played any of those. I'd be curious if I could play them on the cheap. On Steam, they're always like $25 on sale. Fuck that, I'm not doing that for a three-hour campaign. But if it was on Game Pass, maybe. Well, Microsoft haven't really done that. They're also probably not going to put the new Call of Duties on Game Pass because they know how much money they'll lose. They know themselves. They've cultivated a culture of people who don't buy games. They're getting concerned because Activision were making billions. Under Microsoft, they might not because if it all goes to Game Pass, as Bobby Kotick said himself, CEO of Activision, it's stupid. You're basically throwing money down the drain with Game Pass. So Microsoft may not put Call of Duty on there and they are also considering increasing the price of Game Pass Ultimate again. It's going to keep getting more and more expensive. It's going to be the Netflix model. You've already had the good period of Game Pass where it was a great deal. Everything's on there. It's all on the up and up. The good times uh, are essentially over. Now it's price increases. You're going to notice over time that there's going to be way less third-party games. Microsoft will eventually want it where the only games you get on it are Microsoft-related products. So they don't have to pay these other companies, indie developers, give them massive, massive payouts like they've done in the past. It's just going to be Microsoft stuff. And you're going to be paying big fees for that. So Game Pass, if that's Xbox's saving grace, I think their fans are going to be very disappointed quite soon because things are only going downhill there. They're going downhill for the rest of the brand. All this industry consolidation, we saw it with Embracer Group, how bad things are going there. The wheels totally came off. It's happening with Microsoft. It's happening very quickly. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.